everyone, I'm back today with a complete planner system tour to share with you all today. Um, in my last video I asked what you guys wanted to see next and a couple of you said you'd like some uh, peek into a few of my planners and so I thought I would share kind of a complete overview of all the planners I use to keep myself organized. I use a total of four planners. Um, each of them has a different purpose that it serves and I don't know yet, I just have found that four planners works best for me. So let's get started. The first planner I want to share with you guys is my Erin Condren Life Planner. I use this as kind of my general personal life planner, <laughs> as the name suggests. Um, I use this planner for mostly personal things like um, any appointments I may have or, you know, home tasks, cleaning stuff. Um, regular to-dos or habit tracking. Uh, I found it really helpful to have all of that separated from my, you know, blog and Etsy work tasks so I can kind of, you know, keep everything separate. For a cover, I chose this really cute geometric pattern. It was one of the um, kind of pre-available options on Erin Condren's website and I personalized it using my name, Merit Elizabeth. I have these two planner charms from Kawaii Studios uh, that I attach to the coil. I think they're really cute. It's a little star and a tiny little acrylic file effects. Get that closer for you guys to really see. I just think they're really cute. I don't know. I like having them there. <laughs> the main sections I use in this planner are the monthly and weekly spreads. I don't really use too much of the extras that are included in this planner. So let's just flip back here to August. I don't heavily use the monthly spread. This is just kind of a basic overview of my month. I like to keep, you know, kind of bill reminders in here or any big plans that we may have. Uh, in August, we went up to New Jersey for a weekend, so I uh, marked that off with washi tape and some stamps. I use a lot of Studio L2B stamps throughout my planner, so that's pretty much mainly what I used in this spread to mark anything that I want to be aware of going into the month. And then back in the weekly section is where most of my actual planning happens in this planner. I'm going to show you guys one of my older weekly spreads today because uh, recently I've just I've been pretty busy and so I haven't been keeping up with this planner as much as I would like. So this layout has pretty much most of what I do on a regular basis when I actually have time to plan. Like a lot of people that use the life planner, I don't use the different boxes in the days for morning, day, and night. I kind of make up my own system. At the top, I put checklists for my personal to-dos, and while they are kind of broken up by day, I use it as a general week-long to-do list so that if I get to it on that day, great. If not, whatever, I would just like to, you know, complete it by the end of the week. The middle section of this planner I use for any appointments I have or bills due or more kind of plans along that line. This weekend was really busy because we were actually away on vacation, so this got really filled in. But usually it looks pretty blank like this. I don't like to clutter it up with too many unnecessary stickers or stamps or any sort of decoration. I usually keep this pretty functional so I can see at a glance what I actually have to do or scheduled. And then at the bottom of each page, I use the night box for kind of reoccurring events that happen every single day. I usually have a place to record what we had for dinner that night because I just like, you know, tracking what we eat so I can keep an eye on that. And I also have another section where I track what shows we're watching that night. Again, no real reason, just kind of for fun. I like keeping track of, you know, what we were watching at that time because I also enjoy looking back on past planners. It's just, I don't know, it's kind of a scrapbook of sorts, I guess you could say. It's just fun for me. And then I also use this section to mark Melissa's work and now class schedule so I can know when she's going to be around, where she's going to be when she's not, so I can keep an eye on her schedule. And at the very bottom of each day is my habit tracking system. Um, this is where I track any sort of you know, habit I'm trying to form or keep an eye on. I have, you know, taking my vitamins every day, washing my face in the morning, and making the bed every day. So 
Each little box represents one day of the week, and if I, you know, complete the task, I get to check it off. Sometimes I may forget to check it off if I did it. Sometimes I'm, you know, not perfect at doing the tasks every day, but I like to, you know, kind of try and keep an eye on these tasks to see how successfully I am doing them regularly. And so that's a basic overview of how I organize and set up the weeks in my personal planner. I don't really use the sidebar too much. I've tried a couple different things over there, but I haven't really gotten attached to regularly planning anything in this column. I will kind of change around how I do some of my systems. Like you see here, I stamped the days of the week instead of using little stickers. And I also did the same with my dinners and TV markers. Um, it's just kind of how I feel like decorating for the week that week. I don't know, I change up the colors and up here, see, I did little stickers instead of a stamp for my to-do list. Um, so things, you know, change up week to week, but the general system has stayed the same for a couple months now. It's been working for me. And that finishes up my Erin Condren Life Planner. Next we have my blog planner, which I use a letter-sized disc-bound Martha Stewart planner. I bought it at Staples. I'm not sure if they still make these or not. There's been some rumors that the line was discontinued, but that has also been going on for quite some time, so I'm not positive whether or not this is still available. I'll try and look into it and leave a link in the description box if I do find a link for, you know, to buy this because I get asked a lot um, where I found this and if it's still available, and I just, I just don't know. <laughs> so I'll try and look into that for you guys and let you know what I find out. But I have it set up as my blog planner to help me organize labelmemerit.com. Um, I'm not too much of a girl who organizes and decorates the front of her planner. I mean, to be honest, I just, it, this is what it looks like. It's blank, empty, not very pretty. I just never found a need to keep anything up here, so it just stays blank and that works for me. Maybe one day I'll start to decorate it, but for now, it stays blank. Alright, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six tabs in my blog planner. So they are monthly, weekly, social, lists, notes, and money. And that is the best system I have found for organizing what I need to for the blog. The first tab holds my monthly calendar, which again is just kind of a main overview of my month with kind of important dates put in there so I can be aware of what my general month looks like, what I need to prepare for as the time approaches. Um, I like to kind of stamp out when I have either a blog post or now a video scheduled. It doesn't always happen when I have it scheduled. I just like seeing an overview of when I have blog posts scheduled and when I am aiming to have them live. Um, as something gets published, I will write in the title here for the blog post and here for the video. So as the month goes on, this gets a little more filled in. Um, the other thing I do keep in my monthly calendars are any due dates or blog posts scheduled for Studio L2E since I am on their creative team. I just need to kind of keep an eye on when I have things due and you know so I can prepare for those posts for them. Here's a closer look at my monthly pages so you can kind of get an idea of how I'm really doing it. Um, this month it is a little more decorated than I normally do. I just had fun playing with some of the new Studio L2E stamps. I really wanted to get those hexagons out. Um, so I normally, again, I keep it pretty simple just to kind of get, you know, what I need on the paper. I don't really go to too much fuss normally with these pages because they're just functional for me. Okay, moving on to the next section, I have my weekly planner pages. Um, these are pretty much just a giant to-do list for the week. I don't do too much planning other than the tasks I want to accomplish each day. So, I don't know, I, I just basically, each week I stamp out a checklist for each day. I'll also mark when I have blog posts scheduled so I can keep an eye on that. But other than that, this is pretty simple and as the week goes on, I'll also fill in more tasks as they come up or as I think of them. 
Um, and yeah, that's pretty much been what's been working for me. The next section I labeled social because it is where I keep track of everything kind of social media related. I'm planning on adding a lot more to this section, but for now, this is mostly what I use to keep myself organized. These inserts help to make sure that every post that gets published on Label Me Merit gets shared on each one of my social media platforms and everything gets, you know, just checked off and completed for each post. So right after I publish a post, I will write in the title of the post on the date that it was published. And I'll, you know, check off that it was written and posted. After that, I will share it on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and Pinterest, and, you know, check them off as it goes. And once I share it on Instagram, I'll also check that off. That just kind of helps keep me on track, makes sure everything gets done and I don't forget a step. And it just... I don't know, it helps me track also when I publish posts to see how frequently I published that month and I just really like having this record of everything. I also recently added a YouTube tab to this section since I, as you know, started a YouTube channel. Um, again, there's not too much in this section, just kind of a basic notes page with some things I jotted down before I launched, but I'm planning to include um, a couple more inserts to help me organize my YouTube channel, maybe an analytics page. Um, I'm not exactly sure quite what will be included in this section yet, but I know I definitely want to expand it. And next up is my lists section where I just have a bunch of lists. <laughs> um, I have, you know, a to-do list. I have another to-do list some notes and some blog post ideas for each you know section of my blog and an instagram posts idea page i don't use this section as much as i would like um each one of my planners has a master to-do list in it but i find that i don't actually flip to them as much as i would like and so i i don't even know some of these things have probably been checked off and completed by now but i just never go back to check on my master to-do list everything just gets done in the monthly and weekly views so I'm working on kind of maybe rearranging my system so that I get more use out of these master to-do lists because I think they really can be helpful I like you know coming here when I think of something I have to do that I don't have time to do at that moment but I would like to do it sometime in the future and write it down so that it doesn't get forgotten um, now I just have to kind of get myself to look at this list and add that into my tasks for the week. After my to-do section is a notes section which just has kind of notes from articles I've read on blogging and things I wanted to remember. Um, again, I don't use this section as much as I would like, but it's there when I need it. And so it just has a bunch of lined paper that I can write down anything I don't want to forget whatever, I don't know. <laughs> and then my last section is money, which I'm not going to show you for obvious reasons, but it's where I record all my financial information for Label Me Merit. And it's, you know, always a good idea to know where your money is coming from and where it's going. And so I keep inserts in there to help me keep that organized. And so that finishes up my blog planner. I hope you guys like taking a peek through that. So next in the lineup, we have my Etsy planner, which is just a small Martha Stewart A5 sized binder, again, from her line at Staples. Again, I'm not sure if it's still available, but I will um, see if I can find that out and put the information in the description box below here if I do find out. <laughs> Opening this up, again, I don't keep too much in the front section. I have a couple little, you know, index cards with some basic information about my shop on them that I kind of just want to keep handy. I, again, have my binder split up into sections using dividers. In this planner, I have month, week, to do, ideas, money, stats, design, and an extra one that I don't have a use for yet. Inside the month section, as usual, I have a monthly planner. So again, I use these pages as kind of a basic monthly overview to kind of keep myself on track throughout the month. I will mark my new releases on the 1st and the 15th of each month so I can get an idea of, you know, when that's coming up. I've also been doing a little bit of financial tracking in my monthly pages. Um, I started doing this a couple months ago and I really liked having the 
kind of reminder that I'm getting paid each Monday since that's when Etsy does their payouts. I also give myself a reminder at the end of the month to transfer any funds that are still left in my PayPal to my personal account. Um, this has just been working for me and I really like having that in my monthly planner. Other than that, I don't keep too much in these monthly pages unless it's, you know, another big thing. I like to keep it simple so I can just see what's important. My next section holds my weekly calendar and again, just like my blog planner, I just keep kind of a giant weekly to-do list in here separated by, you know, what tasks I want to do each day. Um, if I have a release happening that week, I'll mark it somehow so I know that's happening this week. And then otherwise, I just kind of fill out my to-dos for the day, whatever I need to do at that time. Another thing I wanted to point out to you guys, I really like having paper clips attached to the pages so I can flip right to the page that I need. And say I was using this week, I usually attach the entire set of pages to the divider. That way, when I want to flip to the week that I'm currently on, I can just take the tab and flip it right to the pages that I'm working on, which is really convenient. I use that system in pretty much all of my planners, and it works really well. Next up is my to-do section, and again, like I said with my blog planner, I don't use the master to-do lists and stuff as much as I would like. So I'm hoping to kind of figure out a way to get myself to use these a lot more in the future. But the thing I do use in this planner is my task workflow inserts. And I have one of these for each of my inserts, or excuse me, for each of my releases. And it kind of helps just keep me on task with what needs to get done in order to successfully launch a new design of stickers in the shop. So how I have it set up is each design of the release listed on top in each size that I offer in the shop. And then down the left, I have each task that needs to get done for each design. So as things get done, I can check it off. And this gives me an overview of how close I am to being ready to launch these sets of designs. This page is for my most recent launch, which happened on September 1st, a couple of days ago, and it had my to-do banners and one and two day banners, which are blank and can be filled in with whatever you want. For those of you interested, I'll leave a link to my shop in the description box so you can check those out for yourself. And the next couple of sections I'm actually not going to flip through, but I will briefly kind of go over what I have in each one of them and explain why I'm not going to flip through them. Um, the first one is ideas, and that's just basically a place for me to kind of get out any brainstorming or, you know, drawing um, ideas that I want to get out for, you know, stickers for other products in my shop. Just kind of a place for me to get all my ideas written down. And so since it has a couple ideas that haven't launched in the shop yet, I am going to keep that a secret. <laughs> and again, I have my financial section where I keep track of everything, you know, income, expenses, profit, and all that jazz in my money tab. And then stats and design and, you know, the blank tab that I talked about earlier, these are all just empty. I set up the stats and design sections when I first made my planner with plans to kind of add things in at a later date and I just still haven't gotten to them. Eventually I'd like to keep some general, you know, analytics about the shop, how many sales I make, um, stuff like that in this section. And honestly design, I'm probably going to get rid of that tab. I forget what my original intention was with that section, but I clearly don't need it so I think I'm just going to get rid of it and then this is actually another tab up here that I have covered because it is for a fun secret new project that I have been working on for a couple months with another planner girl and I am super excited to be able to share that with you guys hopefully soon um We've been working together for a couple months to bring you something really awesome that I think you guys will really like and I am super excited to finally be able to get to share that hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned to 
hear about that. And that finishes up our flip through of the planner I use to organize the Merit Elizabeth shop over on Etsy. This next planner I'm going to show you is my everyday planner and it is the planner that I use the most. I use this planner every single day, all day long. It is the main thing I use to keep myself organized on a daily basis. I use yet another Martha Stewart organizer for this planner. This is the junior size disc bound planner. I switched out the original rings and added in larger rings so I could fit more pages in my planners and I really like having those extra rings. You can also see my little sushi clip at the top peeking out there. This is by um, Cute by Design Co. I absolutely love my little sushi. He is just the cutest thing and makes me smile every single day and is just the sturdiest little thing. I mean, I've had him in my planner for well over a month, maybe two months, something like that, and you just, there is no bending, no tearing, just nothing. It is as sturdy as can be and with tiny little pieces of paper. I don't know how she does it, but it is so cute, so high quality. I absolutely love him. So again, as you open up this planner, I don't have too much going on in the front. These pockets are just completely empty. I don't really have a need for them and I don't feel the need to just kind of keep stuff there for decoration. I know a lot of girls enjoy that, but it just it has never appealed to me personally for my planners. I love looking at other girls and how they set it up, but I don't know, just not for me at this moment. <laughs> I do have a dashboard I kind of put together when I first made this planner with a bunch of sticky notes stuck to it, but again, I actually don't pretty much ever use this. <laughs> um, it has just sat here pretty much untouched since I made it. I keep it in there just in case I feel the need to use it one day, but for the most part I use a set of sticky notes that I keep on my desk, so I never go up here, but it's there. <laughs> Um, again, I have some tabs in this planner, and these are another set of DIY tabs that I made using Studio L2E stamps and cardstock. The sections I have are Today, Lists, Happy Mail, if you can see that, Money, and Notes. And in the Today section, this is where I do all my planning. I'm going to show you some blank pages because since this is my all-purpose planner has some personal stuff in the actual to-do lists and so I'll just walk you through my process on these pages. I have um, a kind of bookmark divider that I made using a laminator. I have a tutorial on my blog so I'll share that link in the description box below so you guys can check it out if you want to make one for yourself. The inserts I use in this section are the basic daily planner pages that I sell over in the Merit Elizabeth shop. Again, I'll leave a link to those below in the description box if you're interested. They have various sections which I use to organize different parts of my day. At the top there's a place for the date. And then today's top three, which I write my three most important tasks of the day that I absolutely have to get done no matter what. I like having these separated up here so I don't have to kind of sort through all my other regular to-dos. I can just see at a glance what I need to get done. I also have a section for the schedule for the day going down here from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Honestly, I don't use this section hardly ever. Occasionally I will if I have an appointment for the day I'll kind of jot it in at that time but for most part this stays blank so I've actually been thinking about switching this system up to maybe accommodate larger to-do lists which are down here. I don't know I guess we'll see. <laughs> so down here I have four boxes which I use for to-do lists. There's a place for section headers at the top which I use for blog tasks general tasks and Etsy tasks and then I have an extra one that can kind of just be miscellaneous or I can use it for overflow of many of the other sections but this section changes for me. These three stay the same every day and so what I do each morning is I sit down and I pull out this planner and all of my other planners and I pull the to-do lists from the days I have written down in each other planner. I showed you where I keep those when I went through those planner tours. And I pull those tasks into this page. This helps so I don't have to constantly flip through three planners every single day throughout the day. I can just have everything I need to get done on one page 
at a glance and I can just look here, check off here, and then, you know, throughout the week I will go back and check things off in my blog and Etsy and personal planner to make sure I'm staying on task. But for the most part, I just keep these pages out and use them to complete my tasks throughout the day. Next up is my lists section, which I keep a bunch of different lists in here. I have a master to-do list, a wish list, an Etsy wish list, books to read, just a bunch of basic lists. Um, and as I said with my other two planners, I don't use this section as much as I would like, so I'm working on ways to get myself to utilize this section more. Next up is my happy mail section, which again, I haven't really gotten a chance to set up. I do have a checklist for some pocket letters I am supposed to be making for the creative team for Studio L2E. Um, other than that, it's, I mean, just blank pages, some checklists. I haven't really gotten a chance to sit down and set this section up yet, so it's kind of blank, pretty much unused. Next up I have money, which again, I have inserts in here, but I haven't started using. I have my bills due inserts where um, there's a place for you to write in your bill description and then under each month you can write in how much is due, when it's due, and then check it off when you paid it. And so I currently keep my bills organized in a separate financial planner, but I have been meaning to move what I use from there into this planner. I just haven't gotten a chance to finally make that switch. And lastly, I have a notes section. It's blank. I don't have many notes, and if I do, I usually just jot things down in a post-it, but I just like having this uh, blank scratch paper ready and available if I do happen to need it, so I have a whole bunch of that in here. And that finishes it up for all of my planner tours. So I hope you enjoyed getting a peek into each of the four planners that I use to organize my life. Again, I have my blog planner, general planner, Etsy planner, and everyday planner. Um, I'll also include some pictures and short descriptions over on my blog. I'll leave the link for that in the description box. I'll also leave links to in-depth tours I've written over on my blog for each of these planners. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!